Hello one and all, welcome to Scene Through Glass. Now, I think most of you will know I'm a big fan of classic cars and modern classic cars. But as the world becomes ever more environmentally friendly, trying to save beautiful parts of the world like these luscious green fields in Surrey, and cars therefore become increasingly more electric, I do worry what the future holds for the cars that I love. In 10 or 15 years time, will I still be allowed to own a Ferrari 360? Or allowed to drive a Porsche Carrera GT or a Mercedes CLK Black Series? Who knows? But clearly, I'm not the only person with these concerns because a company called Everati have decided to sort of tackle things head on by taking some of the most iconic classic cars ever made and equipping them with electric powertrains and that quite stunning Resto Mod 911 you see behind me is one of their cars. I'm sure for some of you the idea of an electric 911 is blasphemy and maybe just now seeing shots of what is essentially a 964 driving around silently was a bit weird but don't worry this car has not been created by Greenpeace. The team at Everati are proper car guys, they're ex-McLaren, ex-Lotus, ex-JLR and they kind of created this just to, well, have fun. They saw the benefits of future-proofing an icon but also getting the instant torque that you get from an electric power unit and the sort of significant reduction in maintenance costs, definitely in comparison to a standard 964 and so a huge amount of thought and detail has gone into how these cars are created. Essentially Everati take a, a standard donor 964, strip it completely apart right down to its chassis, sort of water blast all the parts, uh, rust proof the chassis, strengthen it where needed and the body panels actually recreated or most of the body panels are recreated in carbon fibre because one of the sort of main focuses with the Everati 911 was to ensure that its weight was the same as a standard combustion engined 964 because let's face it all 911s have to be relatively light at least for me whenever I think of an EV I think of them as being quite heavy and it was very important for the team at Everati that that would not be the case so they do a huge amount of sort of research looking where sort of weight is distributed and little holes and things that they can sort of utilize and use so as I say ensure that that weight remains the same once they'd achieved that it was about ensuring that the weight distribution remained the same so that the car actually felt like a 964 out on the road so they actually split a battery in two putting a part under the bonnet at the front and then the rest of it in the back under the traditional engine cover ensuring that you still get that 40 60 weight distribution. They don't have a single motor producing 500 horsepower to the rear wheels, I think more than any 964 could ever have hoped to produce, meaning 0 to 60 sub 4 seconds. Are you starting to understand that this is a proper car made for proper car guys? So now we turn our attention to the way this car looks because it was important that it didn't just feel like a 911 but it looked like a 911, a kind of classic 911. I see lots of, sort of similarities to a Singer, to a Theon, to sort of many other resto mod 911s and that's a good thing because I think standing here right now you couldn't tell that this had an electric power unit which kind of I don't know just adds to the to the coolness of the whole project uh, you can see here some of the exposed carbon fiber from that new carbon fiber front bonnet I really like these headlights for some reason but because this is this sort of the wide body variant of the 964 it just has such presence such a sort of squat at the rear and it sits so nicely on these big old wheels which I have to say are running super aggressive cup two Michelin tires so I really hope it's not going to rain at any point today because oh well I just I'm not getting very far um, but yeah, just look at look at that look at the rear. It's got girth to it, and of course this kind of ducktail finish, which would usually be going over the sort of engine bay. But as we now know, that houses part of the power unit. But from every angle, I think it's got that kind of classic 911 look and presence. Now inside, nothing too revolutionary, but that's the whole point. It's supposed to look and feel like a 964 interior. So the sort of pedals are still a little bit offset as is the steering wheel, the dial layout is very traditional, but there are some sort of fundamental changes which needed to happen and some also some nice sort of upgrades as well, which are, which are good to have. Uh, so the dials, for example, read things like, you know, battery temperature and power output in terms of kilowatts. Um, so, you know, there's things that sort of reference the fact that, you know, it's an electric power unit now. Uh, just the two pedals, of course, no clutch in an EV, the, the gear lever, it's 
sort of simple, quite nice sort of uh, lever for drive, neutral and reverse. Got a little screen for the suspension management, more on that to come soon. Got the Porsche Classic Communication Management System, so you can have Apple CarPlay in here. Very nice seats, very nice sort of trim, all the leather feels great and some Alcantara bits and stuff, but yeah fundamentally a very nice 911 interior. Anyway, I'm sure by now lots of you thinking, Sam, what's it like to drive? That's all we really care about. But before we do so, I just want to show off one pretty cool feature because, you know, maybe you've been thinking, oh, well, you know, this is all sounding quite good, but I'm not sure I could drive like a silent 911. Like, ah, oh, it's this, uh, Team Everati have thought of that. So look, if I put the uh, ignition on, everything kind of fires into life very silently. Uh, if I bring my phone up, I can uh, open an app called Sport Active Sound and with the simple push of a button <laughs> We got sound people! How ridiculous is this? I mean, it's basically a speaker um, you know, this is the same technology that BMW used to sort of pump sound into the cabin for sport mode and Mercedes and all these manufacturers now are using very similar technology but it's just being amplified and the most impressive thing about this is that Everati or whoever can essentially record or go out there and create their own sounds I mean on this app I can have a v12 sound in this car which wouldn't be appropriate um, the guys have set up sort of you know what they think are pretty good sound files for today but they're working on you know really taking proper traditional 911 sounds so I mean this is loud I don't know if it's coming across on camera my whole seat is rumbling this is this is loud I haven't driven the car yet with this on should we do it? I think I... Uh, and you're silent. Maybe we should have one, two, or three. Let's do it. We're going to go loud. Okay, so it's not quite... Okay, so you can tell it's a fake noise. On startup, it sounded genuinely like an engine. But now there's a bit of a... It's sort of a futuristic engine noise, but it does add to the experience and it adds to the 911 feel. But let's talk about 911 feel because this is the thing that has really impressed me and surprised me about this car. Driving here on location and then sort of filming with it, it does feel like an old 911 on the road. It's not super refined, it's not aggressively over engineered, it kind of, you know, floats down the. No, it doesn't float, it's stiff, but. I don't know how to explain it, you have to have driven an old 911 to get it, but how they've managed to keep that feeling, well it's very impressive, it's very good. Fundamentally this is still a 964, you know, it's kind of given a second lease of life or maybe a, a new future. It's not a whole new car, so it should feel the same, but not many EVs do. It's just got a nice way where it rides the bumps and you feel like you're in an old car, but then the power delivery is so modern. It does feel a little bit like a Taycan in terms of power delivery, the way it gathers pace. And that's a compliment, I have to say. Let's face it, Porsche, uh, you know, they... Ah, squirrel! <laughs> Sorry if that was a bit dramatic. There was a squirrel and it literally wanted to die. I was more nervous about damaging the car than the squirrel, gotta be honest, but anyway, we survived. You know with me in classic cars, I get, I get excited by the, the emotive elements. You know, the feeling, the connection, the kind of slightly... Well, the bad bits about the car make it good, if that makes any sense. The fact that these pedals are a little bit offset, as is the wheel, and the car's sort of small and shrunk around you, and I love all those things. Uh, important for me to say that this particular car is a sort of pre-production car. It's, it's a bit of a show car. It's off to Goodwood Festival of Speed next weekend. I'm very lucky to be getting a chance this early on in the car. But So there are some things that are still going to be fixed. A few rattles you might be picking up on and the tires aren't working perfectly. So anyway, all of that will be sorted before actual production cars. Fundamentally, I'm here just to see what it's like on the road. And on these kind of, you know, twisty little sections and elements, what's so nice is you still, you get some sort of, you know, a part of Porsche DNA. It's, it's a nice place to be. This soundtrack is helping with the experience. When I was cruising around in silent sort of fully EV mode, yes it was nice and it was cool but I'm suddenly way more excited now that I've got a bit of a all-wheel experience and oh my god does it want to absolutely fly. And then oh there we go. <laughs> You've got to keep your eyes out for a bump because you know, the car is still fundamentally quite light. Suspension is good, but it's got travel in it and 
I don't know, all these things that you just, you do think about when you step into a slightly older car on a road like this. It's just a really weird juxtaposition. I know this is new and I know it's got loads of new tech, but it feels old. I don't know how to explain it. My brain, I'm like, what is this? It's brilliant, but it's so confusing. It's new and it's old. And I'm not doing a very good job, but in a second, we'll get onto some uh, open wider roads and uh, start to extract a bit more of the performance. But straight line wise, we are not in any trouble. Whoa, whoa. Oh my God. I had no traction there. I had no traction. So I was like, oh, oh what's happening? And then it just, and then it just took off, but it's still, it's still quite quiet. It's still an EV, you're not suddenly getting of, an, of a natural gas engine. I thought the soundtrack thing was gonna really kick in. There are gonna be plenty of people who scoff at this, who go, oh, what a silly idea, what a rip off. There's also gonna be plenty of people who've never really thought about owning a classic car before, or always sort of been hesitant to do so, that now will go, oh, hey, I'll buy an electric classic car, that sounds great. You know, this whole sort of EV revolution, it's, it's changing the car world. Yes, us diehard petrol heads are sort of frustrated and we're nervous about the infrastructure and worried about our cars that we love with big, chunky engines. But we are, I think, slowly coming around to it. But then there's this whole other market, people who never really been into cars that now suddenly feel kind of interested, intrigued. They, they like the idea of an electric car. And if you're in that party, the thought of having an electric classic 911, surely that's going to tick so many boxes for so many people. Maybe not the purists, maybe not, but you never know. But definitely the wider, wider public, not even the wider enthusiast. I just think suddenly this is going to open up what is a brilliant car, an iconic car to a whole new market that before would have been scared about maintenance and reliability and all these different elements that you've got to think about when you're buying an older 911. But, yes, it's a lot of money. At the moment, it's a lot of money. What can you do with that? Porsches are expensive. And to get an electric 964 this good, it's a lot of R&D, that's a lot of money you've got to spend on that, isn't it? Oh, it goes around the corner well. Oh, and then you just pick up that immediate acceleration. Now that is exhilarating. I need more of those. So tight and twisty around here. And whilst this car is still small in comparison to modern cars, it is the wider body and it's very expensive. I think it's the only one at the moment, so I'm being relatively careful. Oh, this is... <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. Yes. Oh, we just took off a little bit. Oh, this is great. This is exhilarating. <laughs> and I could not be going this fast in a standard car. I'm so confused. My head is all over the place, people. I do not know what I think of life, but I do know that I'm enjoying this car. Oh my God, it's fast. It's the fact that you can launch it into a corner. It will, it's a 911. It's gonna go around the corner well, and then you just punch it. And okay, fine, it's got this super sticky tire on it. That is great on a day like today when it's still dry. I really like it. I really, really like it. But I think you've got to think of it as, as not a classic 911, I think. Is it obvious that I don't know what to think about this car? It's unlike anything I've ever driven before. I mean, I've said it over and over again, so I don't want to repeat myself, but yeah, a super modern but classic EV. I, I can't get my head around it. Maybe over the days ahead, I will figure it out and we can talk about it more on the podcast, which by the way, I as well, I want to get Justin, the sort of founder of this company, onto the podcast. He's a super interesting guy and this is such an amazing project and idea and I want to, I just want to talk to him more about it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting and insightful. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.